What's up guys, it's time for Weekly Weird News. So up until about a year ago, you would be forgiven for not knowing who the hell Alex Jones is or what Infowars is. For the last 20 or so years, Alex Jones has been mostly a niche figure, and for good reason. A lot of his views are difficult to get behind, and that's putting it lightly. Mm -hmm. At various points in his career as a radio host, and more recently an internet talk show host, Jones has called American tragedies like the 9-11 attacks, the Oklahoma City bombing, the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting, the Boston Marathon bombing, and the Columbine School shooting, false flags, inside jobs, and hoaxes perpetrated by a secret global shadow government that he calls the New World Order, which has connections to both aliens and supernatural phenomena like demons and witches. The, the info wars are our longest wars we've ever been in. Yeah. The wars against information. So anyways, Alex Jones, not exactly mainstream, but somehow over the past few years, Alex Jones has become a household name, thanks in part to our current president, Donald J. Trump, who realized early in his campaign that batshit insane conspiracy theorists were an untapped voting block, and he embraced Jones and the audience that Jones provides. Trump participated in a jovial interview with Jones on Infowars during the campaign, spoke positively about Jones multiple times, and even called Jones after the election to thank him for his support. Jones says that Trump still calls him occasionally for uh, advice, and the White House hasn't even denied this, so cool. We can neither confirm nor deny. So yeah, the last year or so has been huge for Alex Jones. He's more famous and infamous than ever before, and making more money than ever off of his biggest source of income, his website's merch store. Mm -hmm. You see, pretty early on, back in the 90s, Alex Jones realized that most advertisers didn't actually want their brands associated with him. So. He just cut out the middleman and started hawking his own products, mainly herbal supplements like Super Male Vitality, Brain Force Plus, and Survival Shield X, along with other stuff like gun accessories, bulletproof vests, emergency survival food, and water filtration systems to get all that nasty mind-controlling fluoride out of your drinking water. It's almost like he purposely reports on certain things in order to sell products. He's just trying to help people out. I just hope that PewDiePie doesn't sink to this level to start hawking his own Oh, hey bullet. guys, try my Super Male Vitality <laughs> supplements. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, now, all of this, uh, of course, not only makes Jones a lot of money, but also reinforces his brand, which is all about paranoia. Fear sells, it always has. The more traditional right wing, they've always done very well for themselves, exploiting fear of terrorism, immigrants, transgender people, and minorities, but that's small potatoes compared to fear of witches and demons, and an evil global shadow government actively trying to enslave humanity. Uh, and look, we're not saying it's wrong to question the facts of what's going on in the world, or that there aren't actual confirmed government conspiracies throughout history, but when literally everything bad that happens is a New World Order hoax, it's a lot harder to get people to believe you. Yeah, and it, and it isn't just about the things that Jones says. It's actually probably even more about how he says them. Just go search Alex Jones cringe compilation on YouTube and you can spend a whole day watching clips of Alex Jones basically have full on psychotic episodes live on air. Uh, his success basically proves that if you're loud enough, people are gonna listen. Mm. And while all this success and attention has been great for Alex Jones' bank account, it hasn't been so great for his family. Back in 2015, Jones and his wife Kelly got divorced and currently the two are engaged in a court battle over the custody of their three children with Kelly Jones suing for sole custody on the grounds that Alex Jones is an unfit parent. Was it because of all those vlogs he made where they pranked each other? No. No. No, that's perfectly fine in the Apparently, state of Maryland. Yeah. Anyways, while most cases like this are about the he said, she said bullshit, burp, in this case, Jones' own public appearances on his own website and his own radio show are the key pieces of evidence being put forward to justify why he shouldn't have custody. In a pretrial hearing last week, Kelly Jones said of her ex-husband, he's not a stable person. He says he wants to break Alec Baldwin's neck. He wants J-Lo to get raped. I'm concerned that he is engaged in felonious behavior, threatening a member of Congress. He broadcasts from home. The children are there, watching him broadcast. Okay, and that whole threatening a congressman thing, that actually refers to a heated rant from last month on InfoWars where Jones called California Representative Adam Schiff of the House Intelligence Committee a fairy who looks like the archetypal cocksucker, and then in response to allegations of Russian interference in the 2016 election, well, let's just let Alex Jones do the talking this time. In fact, let me say this right now. Let me tell, I'm not against gay people, okay? I love them, they're great folks. But Schiff looks like the archetype, archetypal cocksucker with those little deer in the headlight eyes and all his stuff. And there's something about this fairy hopping around, bossing everybody around, trying to intimidate people like me and you. I want to tell Congressman Schiff and all the rest of them, 
hey, listen, asshole, quit saying Roger and I, and I, I, I never used cussing in 22 years, but uh, the gloves are off. Listen, you son of a bitch. What the fuck's your problem? You want to sit here and say that I'm a goddamn fucking Russian? You get in my face with that, I'll beat your goddamn ass, you son of a bitch. You piece of shit. You fucking goddamn well, fucker. Listen, fuckhead, you have fucking crossed the line. Get that through your goddamn fucking head. Stop pushing your shit. You're the people that have fucked this country over and gang raped the shit out of it and lost an election. So stop shooting your mouth off claiming I'm the enemy. You got that, you goddamn son of a bitch? Fill your hand. I'm sorry, but I'm done. You start calling me a foreign agent. Those are fucking fighting words. Excuse me. Yeah, so not exactly making the best case for keeping custody of his kids. He literally sounds like a angry commenter. The on fuck a did you just say to me? Yeah, yeah. It's like the copy pasta. Yeah. Uh, that's just one of many examples that are being put forth. So anyways, Jones lawyers, they had a tactic up their sleeve. Very smart. In a brilliant move, they argued that Alex Jones, the Alex Jones that you see in countless clips like the ones that we just showed you, that's not the real Alex Jones. Jones' attorney told the judge that judging Alex Jones as a father based off Infowars would be like judging Jack Nicholson in a custody dispute based on his performance as the Joker in Batman, saying, quote, he's playing a character. He is a performance artist. What? Bill Hicks isn't dead? So that's another meta conspiracy. No, I believe that it's uh, uh, Andy Kaufman. Yeah, Andy Kaufman. Maybe Bill Hicks and Andy Kaufman. They're all the same person. Yeah, they are. Shit. Anyway, yeah, that's great. So now all Jones has to do is stick with that narrative, and his chances in this trial actually aren't so bad. Mm -hmm. After all, these are his kids, and any decent father would choose his own children over possibly alienating some of his audience. Well, earlier this week, when Jones' lawyer's performance artist defense started making the news, Jones quickly jumped into action to set the record straight, recording a video of himself while driving, where he clarified, we're all actors, but I believe in what I stand for. I'm not an actor as my main identity. I'm completely real, and everybody knows it. I'm totally real, you guys. And then he spent the rest of the four minute video making vaguely homophobic criticisms of his haters and ranting about the globalists who were, of course, trying to take him down. Him and Josh Feirstein need to get together and do a show. Yeah. They'd probably kill each other. They told me I couldn't bring a gun to the nah, studio. No, Feirstein's but... like, I think they, Feirstein's probably an InfoWars fan because he was all about the, uh, Josh Feirstein got big off of the FEMA camps. Mm -hmm. He was driving past a Walmart and saw some tents in the parking lot. Was, There's the FEMA camp. Yeah. Well, anyways, uh, still though, Jones's chances in this case, they aren't bad. The actual trial began this week and the judge has made it clear that this isn't about Infowars. It's about whether Alex Jones is fit to be a parent and therefore a lot of evidence his ex-wife's lawyers wanted to submit, like the Adam Schiff rant and a shirt with Bill Clinton's face on it and the word rape, uh, aren't going to be allowed as evidence. Nevertheless, Jones is still using every opportunity in the courtroom to make himself sound ridiculous. Yeah, so in response to allegations that Alex Jones smokes marijuana, an illegal substance in Texas, around his children, Jones said that, okay, sure, he occasionally smokes marijuana to, quote, monitor its strength, which is how law enforcement does it. Duh. And that, not only that, through his testing, he has concluded that George Soros's pro-legalization funding has made marijuana too strong, saying, quote, George Soros has brain damaged a lot of people. Uh, he also used a courtroom break as an opportunity to walk out into the hallway and yell at the journalists there for being fake news. He seems real stable. Yeah. A Apparently, real... like he got he got uh, yelled at multiple times by the judge for like smirking and just like making faces on the stand. I, listen, I'm gonna go out on a limb here. You don't have to agree with me, but let's say everything he says is true. Do you really want to live your life like this? Just angry and screaming with a vein popping out of your forehead? All the time. He's operating at 100% biological efficiency, Ricky. I guess you're right. I, I mean, mean, I don't take the vitality pills and I am growing tits. I, I can't lie for every a, day. The man's like 45 and he likes to take his shirt off a lot. A little bit weird, yeah. but he's in great shape for his age. He's not in bad shape. He doesn't have like a gigantic beer belly, but he kind of look, just looks like a barrel. Yeah. I mean, that's the best you can hope for. When yeah. You? When you're that age, he that, looks that like one of those head. like cartoon uh, versions of an old sailor. They yeah. have like tiny little legs. In another age, he yeah. would have been. He's that like old he's Bluto. He's Bluto, yeah. and we're all just Popeye. Yeah. Well, anyway, that is just day one of a ten-day trial, though. There's plenty more to come, so mm -hmm. it'll be fun to see how Jones does under prolonged pressure, especially since both he and his ex-wife have been required by the court not to discuss the case with the media which Alex Jones already technically violated. Whoops. Uh, it's gotta be difficult for a guy who not only is a media personality, but also apparently has no filter to not talk about this. So 
So will his shirt come off during the trial? I hope so. The man loves taking his shirt off, and according to he and his ex's former therapist, he even did it during a therapy session. Something that the therapist said no client had ever done before. What the man is a, a trendsetter. What happened to the laws about uh, therapists not being able to say shit? I don't know. D didn't I, it's they, not a law. Don't they take a Hippocratic oath too? More like a hypocrite oath. Oh. I don't know. It do that didn't come up. Anyways, uh, we'll be sure to keep you updated next week on Jones v. Jones. But that's enough, <laughs> that's enough American insanity for one week. Let's check in with the Japanese. Not only are they currently as scared as ever about their neighbors in North Korea finally saying fuck it and nuking Japan back to the Stone Age, but they can't channel that stress into binging on potato chips. Much like Ireland in the mid 1800s, Japan is facing a severe potato famine, but this one's actually a real famine and not the result of British racism. Last week, Japanese snack company Kalbi announced that they were halting the sale on 15 types of potato chips due to the potato producing region of Hokkaido having been hit by a record number of typhoons last year. And this is a big fucking deal. Japan apparently loves potato chips. Just like baseball. Yeah. That's why we're friends. Mm -hmm. And Kalbi potato chips in particular have been ranked as Japan's most popular snack food. Another Japanese chip maker, Koikeya, also announced that they were halting sales of nine snack products. Both companies aren't sure when sales will resume, but they're looking into importing American potatoes to get them through the rest of the year, although Japanese trade laws limit how much they can import. Meanwhile, bags of chips that usually go for less than $2 are apparently being optioned off online for up to $12. Time to visit Japan and bring yeah. a bag full of chips. Yeah, this is a great financial opportunity for Japan's chip hoarders. Yeah. Or anyone visiting Japan, just pack your suitcase full of chips. It's like how when, uh, anyone that goes over there from here, they come back with those uh, green tea Kit Kats, and it's like, yeah. no, fuck that. We need to bring them fried chicken and waffle lays. Yeah, if you're going to Japan, do a little trade. Bring over all, like, just a fucking suitcase full of chips. I got cool trade ranch out for Kit Kats. Yeah. yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Honestly, uh, looking at some of the flavors that they've got over there, we get it. Salt and lemon peel, wasabi beef, tandoori chicken, curry, brie, shrimp. Those actually sound goddamn delicious. Yeah. I always love when Lay's does their uh, wacky flavors. Like yeah, the they do a damn good fried job. Fried chicken and waffles. They had uh, 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 truffle, uh, truffle fry flavor and all that. It yeah. was good. Why should we be confined to just basic fucking Lay's? Yeah. Better the than, whole world of flavor. Better than there. Canada with their ketchup chips. Oh yeah, the- Get out of here. What do they call it? They had a uh, full chip. What a, what, yeah, what a, I can't remember. Anyways, stay strong, Japan. You can get through this. We have faith in you. We do believe in you, but hey. Maybe those flavors, they sound disgusting to you. Different strokes, different blokes. But here's something we can all agree on, and we can agree that it is horrifyingly disgusting. This rare species of shellfish that lives off the coast of the Philippines. It's called the giant shipworm, and while scientists have been aware of it for a long time, they've never actually gotten their hands on an actual specimen until now. Is this Duterte's fault? Probably. Get all those things out of the water. They're doing drugs. Get out of the water, you son of a bitch. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Son of a whore. Yeah, these giant shipworms, they live in shells that are like pretty much the size and shape of a baseball bat with all but a few inches buried deep under the sea floor. So they're huge. And thanks to the way their shells are shaped, they're hard to remove. So these scientists, they just chopped off the big end of the shell and poured the shipworm out. Whoops. Yum. Just look at that fucking thing. Nature truly really is beautiful and wonderful. Are they eating these? Is that why you're bringing No, up? they're studying. Well, you know what they say, the reason that it's buried, it, it, it just looks small. Yeah. It looks small because it's buried, it, it's this, in the cold water. This species is a, is a grower, not a shower. Exactly. You see it down it's there, it's just tip. like, oh, yeah. look at me, I'm just a tiny little, nope. Yeah. Nope. Like an iceberg. Yeah, just the tip. Just the tip. Just the tip. <laughs> but anyways, before we get into the second half of this show where we look at the weirdest news headlines from this past week, we have to say a big thanks to this week's sponsoring advertiser. You know him, you love him, we love him too, Blue Apron. Blue Apron ships you a weekly box filled with all the fresh locally sourced ingredients you'll need to make three truly delicious meals at home. We use it, it's made us go from knowing nothing about cooking to actually really enjoying the whole process. Mm-hmm. Some of the Blue Apron meals available in April include spinach and fresh mozzarella pizza with olives, bell peppers, and ricotta salata. Ricotta salata! Sweet and sour salmon with bok choy, carrot, and ginger fried rice. Parmesan crusted chicken with creamy fettuccine and roasted broccoli and baby broccoli and fontina paninis with hard boiled egg and arugula salad. Mmm. Broccoli's having a comeback, not just because of your shirt, but because of that, uh, that dram song. Yeah, it's a great vegetable. Mm -hmm. Blue Apron's recipes are always super eclectic and they'll have you cooking stuff you never thought you could or maybe even never knew existed. Get some of those uh, shipworms in there. 
mm, nah. And there's, a, and there's so much variety that you'll never get the same recipe twice in an entire year. I've cooked more food than I can even recall. Just last night I had the shrimp fried rice and it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. For you, our viewers, Blue Apron is offering your first three meals for free with free shipping. If you go to blueapron.com slash weekly, head over there, check out this week's menu. You're gonna love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. Again, that's blueapron.com slash weekly. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. Now let's talk about some real headlines that you're gonna love because they are they are very weird. Here's a spicy one. Yeah, you're gonna love, I, I, you, we've all been waiting 20 years yeah. for this headline. Finally, some closure. Yeah. $43 million in cash found in an empty Nigerian apartment. And you guys all thought you were getting scammed. This poor man. He's been sitting all this money. They never emailed me back. Yeah. I've got all the money right here. I have. Just I'm send me the routing number. All I need is the money to, to start the transfer. Yeah. And you will have this money. And everyone's like, ha, I'm Don't smarter get than you. Again. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And there you go. Now yeah. it's in some random government's hands. Yeah, well, the Nigerian government. Yeah, well. Of Nigeria. It's not in my hands. The cover story here is that- Hindsight uh, is 2020. <laughs> Nigeria's actually got a huge corruption problem. Yeah. Shocking. But uh, they uh, just last year they started a like online anonymous tip form mm -hmm. that people could report corruption in, and they just in the past like six months recovered like a hundred million dollars in uh, snitches get stitches it, yeah. though, Elliot. I know. I'd be scared. Yeah. Moving on. Incredibly loud sex interrupts Florida tennis match and. In your I hometown. should be proud to say this happened in my hometown right now. Woo! Yeah. It was like, it was loud. The announcer's like, oh, it appears someone well, is it, using a pornographic video in the stands, but no, it was like, it, someone across the street was yeah, just like- Yeah, it was like, next to a, co a condo, uh, yeah. like a, a complex. And they, they knew what they were doing. Oh yeah. And uh, yeah, and then the, the players on the court, they were just like, it, one of them was like, it can't be that good. <laughs> Well, that's good. And, uh, yeah, every, everyone seemed to be having a good time. Did you see Serena Williams was pregnant and she won that title pregnant too? Really? Yep. Damn, Serena. I know. See, sex isn't that bad. No. Pittsburgh Penguins fan stabbed in head refuses treatment until end of game. That's a true hockey fan. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to see a Canadian do that. Uh, hockey fans, they're legit. They love their sport. Did he get stabbed by like an opposing team's fan? No, he like, he worked at like an auto body shop and got into an argument with someone. The story wasn't clear, but the guy he got into an argument with slashed him across the side of the head with a screwdriver and he was bleeding real bad. And yeah. he was just like, ah, let's just wait till the end of the third period. Yeah, well. And he saw the game, everything worked out. It is playoffs right now, so. Is it? Or finals. I don't follow hockey that much. I know that it's definitely in the playoffs. It's yeah, I think it, I, yeah, I think you're right. Because the Kings didn't make it. Yeah, it was, it was the first. Yeah, this was the first game of the the playoffs. NBA playoffs are happening right now. If I got stabbed during a Clippers game, I'd be like, "Get me to the hospital." It's it's all fixed anyway. The refs mm -hmm. are in on it. Yeah. Burnt toast evacuates Auckland International Airport. Aw. Oh, this, this smells this, like foyer. <laughs> those kiwis never did anything wrong. Burnt toast though, doesn't that like isn't that like an indicator for you're having a stroke? Yeah. Everyone probably running around like <laughs> we're oh, all having strokes. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! Get to, we need an ambulance. <laughs> no wonder. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, those poor kids. They, they never did anything to anybody. Yeah. Let them be. Yeah. Quit burning their toast. It's all they got. And and f flat whites. They love that coffee. We invented the flat white. I and then Australians are like, Nah, you didn't. No, we invented the flat white. We invented the flat white. <laughs> we invented the flat white. <laughs> and then uh, over oh, here I, in LA, we're I like, just, actually, we invented. We invented the flat it. White. Uh, I just did my Australian accent, so we got one of those in. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, he, got, he ran the poll. I had a poll. And it said, keep let Ricky do the I Australian did accent. I did. I ran the poll at a proper time of day when I knew Australians were awake and active on Twitter. And people still voted overwhelmingly to allow Ricky to continue to use his yeah. horrible Australian yeah. accent. What invented if what, what? <laughs> Fighting around the world. Yeah. See, it's perfect. So sorry, kids. Yeah. Homeless people handed free beer as part of Bud Light campaign. I mean, you gotta start somewhere. It was just like when they gave crack out in the... Uh... Yeah, you've earned a customer for life. <laughs> yeah, get them hooked. Yeah, this is a, uh, I, I didn't know this, but uh, Bud Light trying to break into the UK market. Yeah. Where like, I, I didn't realize Bud Light, they, they tried selling it in like 1999. UK was like, oh, get that out of here. That's Australian. He was a, a you hack. An Australian expat living in the UK <laughs> oh, was like, yeah. oi, no, get me some Fosters. No, they don't uh, like Fosters. No, but like, uh, yeah, it didn't work. So now they're trying it again. And because, I don't know, apparently the laws for drinking in public are lax, they just driving around in a pickup truck with Bud Light, handing it out to homeless people. Homeless people were like, 
Yeah, we love it. Well, well, and why wouldn't they? Yeah, I know. And the locals are like, uh, I don't know. But I'm like, ah, I mean, probably made these homeless people's day. Drinking in the UK is a fucking pastime. Yeah. And they are very, they have a lot of pride in, mm -hmm. in their beer. I can't see this working out, except for people that can't afford a basic pint, which is, I guess you would say homeless people. So maybe their marketing's working. It's just very ill-conceived. Yeah, I think they're, they're probably just trying to unseat Stella Artois as the new uh, official beer of men who beat their They're wives. also storming closer and closer to that uh, Czech Republic front where the the real Budweiser exists still. Budvar? Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, moving on. Sperm tested as possible candidate for delivering cancer medications in female patients. It's good for a lot, you hey, know? Hey, baby. Makes your skin look great. It's actually pretty nuts. Uh, they're trying to take sperm and like, they call it helmets. They put little tiny microscopic helmets oh, that's cute. on the sperm that contain drugs. Mm. And they're basically using the sperm's like ability to just head towards a target. They're yeah. using that to like... Can they put the helmets on inside my balls first? Uh, I don't know how any of it works, but they've tested it and they're like, this is easier than trying to like inject something directly in. You just, you just give the sperm a little helmet and then they, you send them in and they, they all attack the cancer. Oh, are you together. sure you can't just inject that with like a turkey baster or something? Nah, I'm pretty sure we're gonna put the helmets on inside someone's balls and then they have to have sex with you first. Yeah. It's the only way. Baby, we're gonna take care of this cancer together. <laughs> No matter how many times we're it gonna takes. get around those pesky doctor patient sex laws. Oh, she still got it. Back in. Oh, it's terrible. Anyways, uh, decorated Navy SEAL moonlighting as porn star, which is, I mean, you gotta, you, you would hope that his paycheck would be enough. Or maybe he just loves it. Yeah, well, his maybe he's just trying to save lives. His wife's a porn star, ah. so he was making the movies with her. Although I think he's fucked a few other women on camera too. But like. Uh, the big issue here is there's like a double standard, like, uh, there's been various times where women in the military have like posed for Playboy and shit, and then they get like, fucking discharged and yeah, stuff over it, discharge. and like, this guy, like, does it and they're like, woo! Yeah, no, like, yeah. apparently all of his, like, co-workers, like, knew about it, and they're like, yeah, just don't say you're a Navy SEAL in the video and you're fine. But, yeah, that is shitty. Yeah, and he's like, he's like weeks away from getting his retirement pension, and like, depending on how they deal with this, he might not get it's like a that. <laughs> it's like the trope of getting shot on your last day, except he's he's just fucking women. Yeah, getting caught on your last day. Yeah. Oh well. Moving on. Eight-year-old boy drives four-year-old sister to McDonald's after watching YouTube driving videos. I mean, you're gonna learn it somewhere, might as well be YouTube. That kid's a future president. Yeah, I mean, he's learning very young. Yeah. He... I also like that this, either the sister was like totally cool with it, or, I mean, it, or he's very good at like coercion. Okay, no, it sounds like get... the sister wanted McDonald's, and yeah. he's a really good brother. And he's like, we're gonna figure this out together. I'm gonna go watch a couple YouTube videos. You see, the problem is, is everything's everyone's so fucking lazy these days. I know we're gonna have self-driving cars soon enough anyway, but if everyone would just fucking buy a fucking manual transmission, you yeah. wouldn't have any problems. No, no, thieves can't steal them. No. Kids can't drive them. It's amazing, and you feel fucking badass doing it. Yeah, shifting gears. Yeah. Gotta learn somewhere. I should probably learn how to do that. Yeah. Fuck, yeah, I'm gonna have to rent a car in Ireland in about six months. I oh, it's learn, a blast. I should learn how to drive manual. It's a blast. Shit. I had to do it over again in France and it was fun. Whew. 1,100 strangers showed up at his home for sex. He blames Grinder. So yeah, this guy's boyfriend, they're gay together. He, uh, his ex-boyfriend, they broke up. And the guy was real mad about it, so he created a fake Grinder profile with his ex-boyfriend's picture and name and would message all sorts of dudes and say like, come over, I'll suck your dick. And also, if I act like I don't know what you're there for, it's role just role-playing. Oh. Like, yeah, you know, so. This is, this is uh, by the books, just plain harassment. Yeah, so and the guy's suing Grinder for it. because Well, he's, you should sue his ex-boyfriend too. Yeah. Sue them all. Yeah, like that money. sort them out. Get that money. Man kept stolen brain beneath porch, used it to get high, police say. Mmm, how? Uh, Did what, he smoke through it? Well, what's that chemical they used to preserve? A formaldehyde. Oh. So he fa he stole this brain from a university or a research lab or something. The brain is like a big formaldehyde sponge. Yeah. And if you dip your joints in formaldehyde, you get even more high. Don't give the kids any ideas, Elliot. It's really bad for you. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm it's sure it is. Very bad for you, yeah. but yeah. Celebrate 420 by dipping your joints in formaldehyde. Preferably from a preserved human brain. The reason that he looks this way is because we filmed this on 420 in case it goes up tomorrow. 
I just like broccoli. Driver in Durham crash, please, attempts to evade police by pretending to eat breakfast. Didn't work. That's how they caught that Steve Stevens guy too, going through the drive through trying to eat. Well, this guy crashed the car, he ran away a couple blocks, went into like local pancake house. Not an international just, pancake house? I don't think, I don't know how international it was. It wasn't an was. international house of pancakes? But he was in there just like sitting at a booth like ordering eggs and they're like, sir, did you just crash your car like five minutes ago down the street? He's like, no. No, I've been here. <laughs> Bleeding ordering, from the <laughs> yeah, been ordering breakfast. They didn't believe me. This it. is syrup. I've spilled syrup on my face. <laughs> Blueberry jam and syrup. Isn't it great all these flavors of syrup they have here? They have the so many flavors. <laughs> the Swedish berries <laughs> from across the world. <laughs> it's my favorite house of pancakes. Canadian goose with arrow in its neck seen wandering New York. <laughs> we don't take kindly to foreign animals here. Yeah, it had an arrow right through its neck like some sort of gag costume, <laughs> but no, he's fine. Yeah? They're, they're just like, well, it seems And you okay. can't help it out because they're fucking mean. Yeah, the, the animal people, they're just like, well, if you it's, see it sleeping, I guess, call someone, otherwise- We I don't want to get near yeah, the, this like, thing is I'd vicious. I'd rather go after an alligator. Yeah. yeah. Well, and finally, Oregon man dies peacefully after being told Donald Trump had been impeached. Aw. Yeah, good for him. Yeah, a little bit of good news. Yeah, sometimes- so They were just like, yeah. He was just like, please tell me. He's on, he's on death's door. He was about to die anyway, but man, ha uh, he still had his strong political opinions. I'm not leaving this earth until Donald Trump is impeached. And his friend was like, good news. Hey, it's a rough time right now, but I got some good news for you. Donald Trump has been impeached and he's just like, and then he farted and passed away forever. And pooped his pants. And his, his joints locked up. And they and put him in for retracted. And his friend rolled him up and smoked him in a joint. Mm-hmm. And that is it for us today. Okay, I don't I don't know what whatever that is, it's not right on the teleprompter. I don't know what that is. I've never seen that. Okay, but I, no, I can't read it. There's no words on it. There's no words there. Yeah, I don't know what that means to play us out. To end the show? Alright, I'll do it! Go, go! That's our show, and that's, a. Uh, that's our show, and that's it today, and we will leave you with a... I can't do it. I can't do it! We'll do it live! You know what? We'll do it live! Fuck it! Do we'll it do live. live! I'll write it, and we'll do it live! Fucking, Fucking thing. thing sucks! <sighs> okay, whatever. That's our show, and that's it for today. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to watch our latest Tech News Day, as well as our podcast with Charles Copley. And a cut. Sting from cut from his new album. Fuck it! God damn it! <laughs>